this demo assumes that you already have a mesh to work with along with the assumption that the model has a relatively decent edge flow to begin with. For demonstrative purposes, I'm using a lower poly version of the Corgi mesh that I've been talking about the last couple weeks. Prior to this demo, we added a subsurface and an edge split modifier to visualize the silhouette. We'll start with putting the mesh at 0, 0, 0 and adding the armature at the same spot. Next, in edit mode, we select the bone groups we want to edit. These are all green control bones. We also enable structure bone editing and show the extra bones as well as attachment bones. Once all of these bones are visible, the structure edits enabled, we can select individual joints and move them to appropriate spots inside our mesh. It's always good to have an analogous real-world reference, so in this case I've chosen to reference another dog skeleton diagram. My positioning process mostly involves selecting the whole group of joints I need to move, then gradually reducing joints once individuals have been placed mostly correctly. I can always go back and change these as I rig, but it's good to handle all of these joints en masse to get a quick idea of what goes where. Here we can see how X-Mirror works. Bones moved across the x-axis will, for the most part, affect the equivalent joint on the other side of the body as long as their positions actually accurately affect their counterparts. Once a joint no longer matches, it will fail to move automatically relative to the mirrored vertex. Once this is all done, we can flip back to pose mode and Avastar will now automatically snap the deforming bones or match their control bone counterparts. Next, we need to assign the mesh to the armature. We can do this using three methods, and each has a varying degree of usability for non-human avatars. The first method is a bit of a shortcut under normal circumstances, and those circumstances would be rigging for human avatars, for example. But this method isn't really ideal for non-human quadrupeds, and I'll show you why. It's called automatic weighting, and what it does is to assign weights to your mesh based upon general vicinity. To accomplish rigging using this method, first select the mesh in object mode, then the armature that you want to assign it to. If it immediately switches to pose mode, just switch back to object mode. Next, use the hotkey combo control P and choose automatic weights from the armature deform menu or access a similar menu elsewhere by going to the object menu at the bottom of 3D view where you can select under parent with automatic weights under the armature deform section. The problem is that it does so with the assumption that the mesh being affected has the same scale and position as a human. So in using this method, one might find waiting for the chest all the way far back near the hips and so on. On the plus side, auto waiting can create some nice smooth transitions, but let it just suffice to say that it's a tool among others and is not a magic bullet. You will need to tweak at the very least. Moving on, I'll explain a couple methods by which you can either rig from scratch or use to tweak your automatically weighted mesh. Assuming you chose not to use automatic weighting, you can alternatively weight using empty groups. We do this using the same menu as previous, but instead choosing empty groups. Alternatively, we can simply select the mesh, then go to the modifier panel in the properties pane. Here, we open the add modifier drop-down menu and choose armature. From here, we can define which armature the mesh should be assigned to. Any existing weights will thus refer to this armature moving forward. If no weights existed to begin with, this gives you a blank slate to rig with. But if this mesh was previously rigged to something else, for example, a different custom armature, you may need to remove all associated vertex groups before proceeding. Next, we can assign weights to our mesh manually using one or both of the following options. If the mesh was assigned to empty groups, chances are the vertex group menu will be empty. Before we proceed, a helpful tip is to select the armature in object mode, then check the names checkbox, 
which will toggle bone name visibility. Once these are visible, we can click the Skin and Weight Workflow Preset button on the Avastar tab, and this will toggle visibility of the M bones for us to rig with in edit mode. We can add vertex groups manually by clicking the plus sign on the right hand side of the vertex group menu. We must rename this new group to something that matches the M bone we want to rig to. It's very important that this matches exactly. Upper and lower case letters count as well. You can rename the group by double clicking it then type in the correct group name. Next, select the vertices you want to assign to this group in the 3D view and click Assign. Note the setup of this menu. You can assign or remove weights. You can also select or deselect vertices based on the vertex group you select. The important thing to mention with this approach is that this sort of assignation is pretty flat. By this, I mean that every vert weighted in this manner will have the same weight. This is not always ideal for models that have soft volumes. For this reason, I'll now cover a different supplementary weighting option, which works well with volumes that need smooth transitions. Once again, let's assume we just assigned the mesh to this armature with empty groups. We choose the Skin and Weight Workflow Preset button in the Avastar tab, then change the mode to Object Mode. Next, first select the armature, then the mesh. Then change the 3D view to weight painting mode. The mesh should turn blue, which means no weights have yet been assigned to the current vertex group. You should also see the armature M bones in either purple or blue overlaying the 3D mesh view. From here, you can right click the bone you want to weight to, then choose an appropriate brush from the tools tab on the left. Just briefly, here's an explanation of my most commonly used brushes in weight painting mode. Add. This is a brush which adds influence cumulatively. This means you can set the brush to 0.1 weight, and each click will add 0.1 weight to the selected area. Subtract. This behavior is the same as add, but in reverse. Blur. Sometimes you'll want to create a smooth average transition between two sets of verts. This is the tool that you'll use. Draw. Pick a weight and this brush will apply it to your mesh without the need to accumulate. Each brush can be adjusted by weight, radius, and strength. You can additionally experiment with the auto normalization and multi-paint options, but for those who are just starting out rigging, I recommend just weight painting without normalization first. Keeping in mind that each vert can only have up to four vertex group weights assigned, and the total weights assigned will add up to a maximum of 1.0. These options are not necessary if this is kept in mind, since the weights are calculated and normalized on export. Using the mouse cursor, we can brush on the desired weights. Tablet support is also available, just click the little button on the right side of the radius or the strength sliders to allow pressure sensitivity to be controlled by the tablet stylus. When we are ready to test these weights, we need to click the Pose and Animate Workflow Preset button. This will hide the M bones and it will show their analogous control bones in green. We can select the bone we waited to and either move or rotate it to preview how the mesh is rigged and how each assigned vertex group interacts with each other. When rigging as a soft volume, generally we want to have a smooth gradient of influence from one bone to the next. Sometimes this means we need to extend certain bone influences beyond the immediately adjacent bones and geometry. For example, rather than requiring an extensive chain of tail bones to rig a full curvy tail, we can create a graceful curve and rig simply by working judiciously, gently extending M tail 1's influence farther down the tailbone chain, while the same can be said for M tail 6 and its bone chain siblings. What we end up with is a tail with bone weights that extend all the way down the tail to some degree, plus only slight additional edge loops to allow the tail to be less faceted along its length. Of note, it's possible to do vertex to vertex based editing in weight painting mode as well. 
Just hit the V hotkey to make these verts visible and selectable. To hide them, just hit the V hotkey again. So, if you want to select only a patch of vertices and brush them with a particular weight painting brush, you can. This is particularly useful because you can combine this functionality with the vertex group selection tools back here under the vertex groups menu to either include or exclude specific parts of your mesh. Lastly, there is another useful tool you can use as part of the weight painting tools and that's gradients combined with your brush stroke. This allows you to define a brush stroke with a differential in brush strength from start point to finish point and it does so gradually, allowing for smooth transitions between those two points. To create a gradient with your weight painting brush, simply hold down the Alt key while making your brush stroke. Keep in mind, this adds a weight for the currently active vertex group to any selected verts. If you do not have vertices showing, this means every point of the mesh is fair game, so you might end up with some areas that have been weighted to these groups which you may not want. In such a case, you will have to go back and adjust the vertices accordingly. Avastar does have some tools to mitigate this. You can check for these problems here on the Avastar tab while in Edit or Weight Painting's Vertex Editing mode to highlight problematic areas. One last thing about the Weight Painting mode, it also has an X Mirror tool, and you can find it in the Options tab. This is really useful if you need to weight paint a symmetric model. It handles symmetry for both central bones and peripheral ones. So that means you can weight paint both sides of a torso at the same time. It also means you can weight paint verts to the left arm and have symmetrical verts on the other side weight to the same spot on the right arm automatically. With these tools introduced, weight painting becomes a process of initial assignation and ultimately a lot of trial and error. You will need to weight and test by animating all the bones in the same relative area to ensure the mesh is doing what you want it to. You may ultimately find this to still be the case well into the animation stage, and that is quite normal. That's it this week. If you need a hand, if you have any comments or feedback, I can be reached in World, on Plurk, as well as on Twitter as Akishichi Roji. I create weekly posts about new content, process, and tutorials on my blog. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to follow my infrequent string of videos. Or do check out my Patreon campaign, which makes these posts possible. Patrons are notified once posts go out and enjoy a number of other benefits. The link for everything is in the doobly-doo below. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.